Professor Diaz here. In this video, I'm going to talk about changes in market equilibrium. All right, changes in market equilibrium. So what can happen is we're going to bring, well, we're going to bring all of this stuff together, right? There can be changes in demand or changes in supply. This would change the entire demand curve. Uh, if it was an increase in demand, it would look like that. If it was a decrease in supply, it'd look like that. If it was an increase in uh, supply, it'd look like that. Um, as you can probably imagine, when we shift the entire curve, this is going to create a new equilibrium. So let's say that um, we have a shift in demand and people's tastes and preferences increase for this good or service, all right? So we're gonna have an increase in demand, which means demand is gonna now go here to D2 and demand is increased. And with this, market equilibrium price is going to increase. So we could have, let's change color here. Let's change it to um, pink. So we had market equilibrium uh, here, which gave us an equilibrium price here at like, you know, four and a half dollars and an equilibrium quantity here, Q1. With this increase in demand, right, people's chase, tastes and preferences for this good or product increase, it's gonna shift uh, demand out, right? There's gonna be a change in demand. This is going to have a new equilibrium price and a new equilibrium quantity. Okay, we can call this P1, even though we know it's about $5. I'm gonna erase the numbers on this, right? We know uh, those, represent actual numbers. Oh, goodness. So we have an increase in price from P1 to P2, and we have um, an increase in quantity from Q1 to Q2, okay? So as people's tastes and preferences increase towards an object, uh, a demand, a product or a service, more people are gonna be willing to pay a higher price and more people are going to buy that good or service, okay? Now, please note, this change in demand, because the whole curve shifted, caused a change in quantity supplied. Okay, so that this change right here is not um, a change in supply. There's a change in quantity supplied from Q1 to Q2, but there's not a change in supply, there's a change in demand, right? And so this can happen in other ways too, right? Uh, let's do another example. Let me get rid of some of these old lines. Let's say instead of an increase in demand, let's say we have a decrease in supply. Okay, so we go to S1 or S2 here. So here we have a decrease in supply that's so going backwards. And our equilibrium quantity was here at Q1 and our equilibrium price was over here at Q1, uh, P1, excuse me, P1. And now our equilibrium price is gonna go up, but our equilibrium demand our equilibrium quantity demanded is gonna go down. So we have a decrease in quantity demanded because the, the demand stayed the same. The demand stayed the same. There's a decrease in quantity demanded. The supply decreased. Quantity demanded decreased and supply decreased. That's how we would say it properly. Right, um, this is because again, if you think supply, there's less supply, there's gonna be a higher price for the people that are still supplying. And as the price goes up, the quantity demanded goes down, right? So this makes sense as well. You can shift any of these curves, right? We've already talked about the um, determinants of demand and the determinants of supply. And so you know what shifts a curve in each direction. And now you know what the equilibrium is, right? The equilibrium is the point where they cross. 
Um, and depending on how the curves shift, will change the market equilibrium, which will change the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity, right? So there's gonna be homework questions and quiz questions and exam questions that ask if there's an increase in supply, what does this do to price? Uh, what does this do to quantity? If there's a decrease in demand, so on and so forth, right? You need to be able to shift these curves around and understand how, A, how does it change market equilibrium, both in price and quantity, and B, does that shift mean a shift in supply or a shift in quantity supplied? Does that shift mean a shift in demand or a shift in quantity demanded, right? So hopefully this has all come together for you now at the end. Um, please make sure you let me know if you have questions.